Welcome to Price This House. I'm Dave O'Neill. And I'm Kimberly O'Neill Mara with Century 21 Spender and O'Neill. Well, we've had a busy summer and spring market, and today we're going to go over the four communities, Reading, North Reading, Andover, and Linfield, and talk about what's happened from April 1st through September 30th. I think you'll find some interesting numbers. Absolutely. Let's get started with just the facts, Dave. In uh, North Reading, the spring and summer market for 2016, there were 114 sales compared to the same period last year of 106 sales. That's an increase of 7.5%. Very, very healthy increase. Um, average list price this year was 606 compared to last year of 578, which is a 4.8% increase. The average sale price was 591 versus 574 a year ago, which is a 2.9% increase. And the total days on the market, uh, 55 this year compared to 48 last year, which is a slight increase of about 14%. For North Reading condominiums, we had 28 units closed versus 31 a year ago. Uh, it's down a little bit. Uh, what's that? Four, three units at 9%. Average list price, 321 versus 319 a year ago. Virtually the same. Average sale price, 319 versus 314. That's about a 1.5% increase. And days on market from 64 to 56. So days on market has decreased by 12%. The multifamily market, as we say every single time, there just isn't a multifamily market in North Reading. But as you can see, last year we had one unit sold, nothing this year. And for land in North Reading, it's virtually the same thing. This year we had two pieces of land that sold versus one a year ago. Uh, the average list price this year is 302. Um, versus 125. Again, that's very, very property specific. Um, 302 is probably pretty much average for a building lot right now in North Reading uh, in a good location. That would be something that um, last year it was on for market at 346 days versus 226 days this year. So the market again, very, very healthy in North Reading. Great, thank you. Um, for the Reading single family market, 2016 uh, spring and summer had 134 units. That was down 10% uh, from last year, which had 150 units. Again, we just need the listings there. The listings are selling quickly. Uh, we just have a lack of them. And so that shows a little bit of a decrease there. The sales price um, actually went from 571 down to 557. And the list, I'm sorry, that was the list price. The sales price went from 577 down to 569. You know, slight decrease, but virtually flat. Days on market went from 33 to 37. Um, so, you know, a little bit of a change there, but nothing significant. The condo market went, um, in 2016, we had 81 units sold versus 2015, there were 67. Um, that's up 20%. Um, Reading Woods continues to build, and so that really you know, kind of has a lot uh, to say for that. Um, the average list price actually increased significantly, up to 445 versus 379 a year ago. So that's a 17.5% increase. Um, the average sales price was 443. That's up from 381, um, and that's a 16.2% increase. So great, strong condo market in Reading. Um, total days on market was only 27 days compared to 70 a year ago. So that's um, down 61%, which is really significant. Things are just moving very quickly in the Reading market. Um, in terms of multifamily, not a lot of activity. Actually, none, nothing sold this spring or summer. Um, there were three units a year ago, but again, virtually um, nothing worth uh, a huge discussion. And only one parcel of land sold uh, for $450,000. Two sold a year ago um, in the $200,000 range. But again, when you're only comparing one or two lots, it's really you know, not significant to talk about statistics. Now we'll move on to Linfield. The Linfield single family market is down significantly from last year. Uh, 74 units during the same time period of last year, it was 97 units. That's a 23% decrease. Again, a lot of it has to go with the availability of inventory. Average list price this year of 724 versus last year of 697. That's almost 4% increase. And average sales price this year, 711 versus 684 last year. 4.5% increase. So again, lesser homes on the market, lesser homes selling, but prices are still increasing. Days on market this year is 57 versus 88 last year. That's a 35% decrease in the number of days or an increase in an activity of 35% uh, faster. Linfield condo market, 19 this year versus 12 last year. That's a 58% increase. 
That's huge. Average list price of 521 versus 516 last year. That's a 1% increase. And average sales this year, 519 versus 511. That's a 1.5% increase. So prices are hanging about the same, but just a lot more of them selling. And days on market, 130 this year versus 168 last year. A lot of that has to do with new construction, and they go on the market earlier, and they last until they're finished. So... Um, that's kind of skewed a little bit. Yeah, the marketplace condos, I think, probably account for a mm -hmm. lot of that because right. as the construction projects are coming mm -hmm. closer to completion. Linfield's had a lot of new condo building in the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. And multifamily, it's the same as North Reading. Virtually no market there at all. And land, two units this year versus one last year. Uh, 399 average list price for the land. Average sale price, 378 uh, That's a little bit high, but that's pretty much average probably for a Linfield lot of land. Now we'll go on to Andover. Great, thank you. Um, in 2016, there were 233 uh, units sold during the spring and summer compared to 224 a year ago, so up 4%, which is great. Um, the average list price increased from 680 up to 688, which is a little over 1%, and the sales price from 669 to 676, so again, up about 1%. Um, days on market stayed pretty flat um, from 68 uh, this year versus 67 last year, so that really hasn't changed too, too much. Um, the condo market was exactly um, the same. Everything's just been very consistent in, in Andover. 76 units sold in 2016, also 76 for the same period in 2015. Um, the average list price went down a little bit from 447 down to 399, and the average sales price went down from 442 down to 393. That's about 11% uh, decrease. Days on market also decreased from 83 in 2015 to 74 in 2016, which is about 11% decrease. Uh, multifamilies, there were three that sold in 2016 versus only one a year ago. Um, comparable pricing, there were 595 was the one unit that sold in 2015. The average price was 558 in 2016. Um, it sold for 540 last year, 548 this year. So again, pretty, um, pretty consistent. Um, the days on market last year were 119 and those dropped to 51 this year which is pretty significant. And unfortunately, there was no land that was sold um, in the spring and summer of 2016. There's just not much land left in Andover that's available. Well, that brings us to Talk of the Town. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to have a home stager join us, Carol Robertshaw from Homescapes Designs, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Carol, for joining us. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about who you are, what your background is, and what you and your company do, and what services you have to offer? Sure. Um, I my dis, my um, business is Homescapes Interior Design and Redesign, and um, I have been a designer for over thirty years. Uh, I started out um, to get my I have my bachelor's and my associate's degree in certain kinds of art, and then I went in to after my um, kids were born, I got my master's certificate in interior design and interior architecture and had my own business, this same business, and then my kids went to college, so I had to get um, a job with a lot of um, benefits, so I worked at Jordan's Furniture as an in-home designer for 12 years, and now I'm back to having my own design business, and um, I go in to most design place, most homes, and I give them suggestions and I give them lists. And um, I bring all my paint colors in case they want to have, to change the paint colors in most rooms, which usually I suggest when I go in. And um, we move furniture around and we, I hang accessories and um, bring them accessories. I go, I spend a lot of time at home goods and things like that. Do you usually use their furniture and you work with that first? Or do you, yes. do you ask them to remove their things and bring in your own pieces? Or is it a combination? Um, if it's for staging, then um, it depends on what the furniture looks like. Uh, if, if it's for staging, first of all, when I go into someone's home, um, I start with the front of the yard. And we look at what um, is the outside of the yard. All, all it may need in the front is a couple of really beautiful uh, flowers mm -hmm. on just either side, of, yeah. just 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 to invite you to come in, um, and then um, when I go into the home and I take very good notes and I write room to room to room to room what they need to do. 
while I'm in there for the, for the staging, usually we're moving around furniture. I'm not um, moving it, but the people are moving their own furniture around and um, taking down things from the walls, things that they didn't realize shouldn't be there, just personal objects and things like that. Um, and um, they get very excited about the prospect of kind of paring down their home. And every single room I write down what needs to be done, room by room. And we go through into their basement, into their bedrooms, and then we go outside of the house and I can suggest even like patio furniture and having the umbrella up out if it's, if it's nice out, have the umbrella up and make it look like it's really inviting to go out there. Um, if your back porch is the thing that's really a, a, a centerpiece, put some mats on the table and, you know, maybe a, a pitcher of lemonade or something like that. You know, just suggestions of things like that. Um, and usually by the end, um, uh, when I'm there, I'm usually there for an average home about an hour. Some homes, which have been bigger homes, um, I'm there for about an hour and a half. Not that much longer. If, if um, there's more things that they need, they have my um, text and my cell phone and they can get in touch with me if they have any questions because I do take pictures just in case they call me back and say, what, what, did I, what was yeah. I supposed to do there? Um, and um, sometimes the realtor meets me there and sometimes the realtor doesn't. Now Dave O'Neill um, is my um, realtor that I've used a lot and he trusts me enough to just let me go into the site and talk with the people. And it's usually uh, two people that are there because you need both people if you're trying to suggest where to move things and what to get rid of. Um, after I'm finished there, um, I go back to my office and I write up a list of all of the things that um, people might um, want and um, I give them a list of things that room by room by room that they can do. I send it by email to them and by email to the realtor so that they both have a checklist and people just love that. They love having a checklist and I can tell you most of the time before I'm even down the street they're doing a lot of the things that I told them to do. I get that to them within a, a, a day or two so that they have that, especially if it's a crunch time and um, they're, let's say I'm going on a Wednesday and they're putting the house on the market on a Friday. So I try to get it in as, as quickly as possible to them. Um, I leave them with a folder and um, I leave them some suggest and if they needed a floor plan, I certainly can do a floor plan for them and um, that I would uh, try to get back to them. Usually you don't need a floor plan for something like that. Um, sometimes I do homes that have absolutely no furniture in them and they're new construction or they just need a little bit of help with paint or they need um, some furniture that's rented. When I do rented furniture, I'm there. I, I do all the renting online. I'm there when they bring it to the home and where they're supposed to place it. I bring all of my own accessories, lamps and pillows and sometimes a couple of pictures extra just to get them, um, get the place looking a little bit homey. I might bring a big bowl for the kitchen and put some oranges in it, you know, something for a pop of color. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also there for when they come back and they take the furniture out. Mm -hmm. um, so we make, I make sure that everything is in place mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And that works very well if it's a home that needs to be staged. Sometimes homes just need to be empty, the floors done, and paint done. Mm -hmm. It depends on the home and it depends on how many rooms there are. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that want the staging and sometimes I've said, no, you, it's too big of a house to have to stage. It's too many rooms to stage. And usually when it's a big space, m people have the imagination to know what can fit in here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what room it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a dining room or it's a family room, 
or if it's bedrooms and mm -hmm. things like that. So you're talking a lot about like the staging aspect. Do you also do if someone's purchasing a home and you know doesn't have anything? Do you also help Ab them with the interior absolutely. design aspect I as have, well? Um, <clears throat> clients that I have done staging for, they've moved to another house. They've called me, and now I'm doing paint for that new house, and I'm doing floor plans for there, and I'm helping them with furniture and things like that. I'm also an outside designer for Jordan's Furniture, so I um, have salespeople that I work with there, and I can bring people in because mm -hmm. um, they have such a good selection of furniture, and it's so many different price ranges mm -hmm. that you can get. And I do a floor plan so that they know exactly what size is and what things to look at, and then I meet them there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And kind so, of shop with them. Yep. And like I said, I, I do bring in a lot. I When people need accessories, I go to Home Goods. I go to Ann and Hope Curtain Outlet. I go to places that are inexpensive for them, mm -hmm. and it makes their home look wonderful, and you wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, how about the other end of things, like paring things down? Like, if you're, do you help with, like, you know, the staging is, you're talking about moving the furniture around, but do you help them declutter and, yes. and decide what needs to what get needs thrown away, what needs yes. to get donated, that sort of thing as Definitely. well? Definitely. And it's in the list mm -hmm. of things. And usually um, they're really good about um, getting rid of things. They're excited to know, okay, this is what I need to do mm -hmm. before we put this house on the market. And it, and it works really, really well. Good. So I do them and then I that's why I leave them my folder so that if they need to get in touch with me later on for anything else and can. that all takes just an hour an hour and a half yep wow yep let's go back just a little bit and let's talk a little bit about the purpose of staging uh, we go into houses sometimes and we talk to somebody that's getting ready to sell their home and they're like um, intimidated by the term staging staging isn't necessary to um, furnish a house it's just to draw the eye to certain features in a room, right. correct? Can right. talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, there was one house I did in um, Wilmington just recently, and there was just much too much furniture in the living room. We had to get out two chairs out of there because it was the kind of room, like a split, where the living room was on the top, and they had too many things. So I had to tell them to get rid of those two chairs. Once they got rid of the two chairs and they brought them down in the basement where they were very comfortable, it was, they looked better down there. Um, it made the whole room become one large room with the living room and the dining room and where the television set was. Um, and just getting rid of the extraneous things that you don't think about, the dog and the cat bowls, the um, crates for animal, animals, things, the toys all over the place, again, and with children as well. If you're if you're doing a home that has a lot of toys around, you need to get rid of those toys. You need to go into the um, closets and get rid of as much as you can from the closets. And if you're going to keep things in there, make sure that there's not it's not packed. That there's just a little bit of space you know, in there, enough to make people think, wow, I can put all this big in there. Yeah, big the best thing to do is to empty things. Kitchen drawers. Kitchen drawers are one of the things that people open. A lot of times they want to see if it's a soft closed door, drawer, but um, they want to see how much space there is in the drawers. So you want to make those, your junk drawer needs to not be a junk drawer anymore. Take everything out. It's a great way to get rid of things, throw it away or place it where it should be placed and make the drawer look nice and neat. Mm -hmm. Just you have to think about yourself walking into a home that you're going to buy. What would you, what would you be looking for when you're looking in a home? I've also never been to that home where usually the realtor has been there. Mm -hmm. And I've never been there. So I'm just walking in with a very objective. Yeah, as a, poten eye. a potential buyer would have right. the same as a, as a buyer would be if they mm -hmm. were walking into the home. Yeah. I always tell people, you're going to be moving, and so you're going to have to pack. So why wait till after this, you know, that we have right. an offer? Pack whatever you can pack away now and put it in the basement or put it in storage or what have you, and just you know, right. live with as you know, little as you possibly can. Some people have the pods, mm -hmm. and they put them in their driveways. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
it's not a bad thing to have that in your driveway when you're doing an open house because you can close it up. Yep. And they can mark their boxes and they can put the things in there. Um, and it doesn't have to be taken away mm -hmm. at the time of that you're going through because it's usually on the side of the of the driveway. Garages are another huge place where people accumulate stuff. Much more stuff than they absolutely need. Mm -hmm. That's usually one of the hardest places to get rid of things because they've got everything that they wanted to dump, they put it in the garage as a last resort. Yeah, but they're not ready to part with it but yet. But they're not ready to go. Those are the places where you need to, okay, box it up, figure out whether you want it or not, and put it in the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get two, look like if you've got a two-car garage, make sure you can get two cars in there without all sorts of trash cans and mm -hmm. things like that. And bicycles and yard yep. toys. And, yep. Yeah. That's really important because you may not have kids when you're going into a house. Mm -hmm. And, and you want to see what the house is going to look like for your potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every buyer is different. And yeah. everyone is different. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to be selling to this particular um, age um, and genre of people. And you, sometimes it turns you around. Never and you, you never know. You never know who the buyer's going to be. You yeah. never know who's yeah. going to So you purchase. spend like an hour, an hour and a half. Like how much time does it typically take, take the home seller to go through your checklist and to do the things that you ask them to do. I'm sure there's a range, but you know, it's something you know that what? they can if do. They're, if they're in a hurry to sell the house, they'll start the minute that I leave mm -hmm. and I'll get them that checklist by the next day. And usually they've done half of what's on the checklist, but they'll stay up for a couple of days and get it get done. It ready. Mm -hmm. If they really want to sell the house, mm -hmm. if they're in, in a hurry to sell the mm -hmm. house and they've already um, they already know that there's an open house going on there. It's better to have more time. Sure. So if a realtor can call me, you know, five days ahead of time, a week ahead of time, we're having it next weekend. Mm -hmm. Then that's better. Yep. Um, to do but that. But still, that's not terribly long lead time. But to only need a week isn't too too bad. Right. It's not like you need four to six weeks. We talked right. about paint colors. Talk a little bit about that end of what you do, especially someone getting their home ready. Sometimes you go into a house and maybe the walls are a little tired or whatever. You actually sit with the homeowner and say, these are like more neutral colors. Yes, versus I bring like a palette. I have um, like these timeless neutrals. And I come in and I try to bring a palette. I also have big samples for people. But I, and I can leave these with them what works the best. Nowadays, it's a neutral gray, a very kind of a grayish, taupey kind of a color that's very soothing. Anyone can walk in there and feel like they're in the house. Uh, people, I don't know why in the last 10 years, people were still doing accent walls, a red accent wall or a red dining room. Those are the kind of things that a, a buyer cannot see through. They can't see through a lavender wall here mm -hmm. and a green wall over here. You have to stand in one spot in your home. And you, you can see, let's say you can see the kitchen, the dining room, and the living room. They all have to be neutral because nobody can see past that green paint or the purple accent wall. Mm -hmm. um, wallpaper is a little different because you can't get rid of wallpaper. Somebody else can come in there and and um, you know, tone it down. Um, if you're, if you have pets that have scratched up all of your baseboards and scratched up your windows and things like that, those kind of things, I suggest try to get that done beforehand. Before. Touch up your your around the door, the trim, the baseboards, things like that, because that can often bring the paint up. If you don't have time to paint, wash the walls a little bit. Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed what's on people's, what's oh, on sure. your walls. I always saw like the little magic erasers on the riot stair mm -hmm. risers, like that, the, oh, yeah. I want that nice clean white, just yep. a little magic eraser does wonders. So they are to clean the, yep. little, the little scrub yep. things, yep. those are great. And a lot of times when someone lives in the house, they don't see it. Of course. Yeah. They don't see those little things that somebody coming in mm -hmm. would um, see themselves. So I'm walking in going, ooh, 
I noticed that scratch over there on the baseboard, or I know the cat, I noticed the cat scratching on the top of that sofa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so get a throw and cover and that put spot. the throw mm -hmm. over that because it makes it look unkept and neglected. Mm -hmm. So you want to put the throw over and just, it's just a band aid for what's coming in there. Most people want to come in and paint again anyway. And pick their own colors. And pick yeah. their own colors, but they can't see through the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and your cabinets should be cleaned, like some Murphy's Oil soap or whatever. Your cabinets should be cleaned. And um, it, it really, you have to think about walking in. If you have um, granite countertops, you know, use a cleaner on them. Just get everything as clean as you possibly can. Your bathroom, don't leave the toilet seat up. In your shower, take as many things out of the shower as you possibly can, because we usually all have 10 or 12 yeah. things, <laughs> bath soaps and shampoos and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Only leave two major things and some soap in the shower. And if you're going to put towels out, have them be clean towels and make sure that they go with the rest of the room. Don't put an orange towel and then a red towel and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, again, it's just walking in and seeing something. Make sure that your, all your rugs are vacuumed. The floors are swept and cleaned up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those are just simple things that you can do before, the, before you have the open house. And just put some flowers out. I always like to have, like it's fall, put out a mum on the kitchen table and put it in a pretty basket. Mm -hmm. You know, just have something a little bit um, homey mm -hmm. when you're coming it's in. It's not too stark. Yeah, yeah, some people put the, the, a little candle with the apple cinnamon or something like that because it smells really good. So when you walk into the house, you, I know, I know some, um, some people want to cook cookies, big yeah. cookies. Or brownies or cookies. So, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. So it smells like home yeah. when you walk in. Mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Sight and smell and sound are really, really important to everyone yeah. Yeah. when they walk into the house. Good. Wow, you're a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> well, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And um, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. That was great to have Carol on. She's such a wealth of knowledge, as you said, and some great tips, and hopefully, you know, we'll get some people out there that are looking to use her. She's really great. I do uh, a lot of work with her, and she's really good. The people really like working with her, and um, the house has come out really, really nice. So when you bring in the professional photographer, they really shine. Well, that's they good, yeah. yeah. If you have questions for Carol or for us about anything, you can reach us at price.thishouse at century21.com. And now let's go to spotlight some of our future homes. We're going to move on. Um, first property we're going to talk about is 14 Heritage Way in North Reading, recently closed for $770,000, which was actually $25,000 over the asking price. It's eight rooms, three bedrooms, two and a half baths, 3,400 square feet of living area, but that does include about 900 square feet in the lower level. Mm -hmm. So it's a 2,400 square foot house with a finished downstairs. Uh, it sits on an acre of land in a really, really nice neighborhood. The kitchen had been done over about four or five years ago, white kitchen, opened into a nice big family room with a lot of built-ins, gas fireplace, big round top window, had all the bells and whistles that people were really looking for. Uh, nice wood floors, nice windows, uh, oversized deck, beautiful fenced in yard. And again, uh, for $770,000 for North Reading, I thought that was a good price for a three bedroom home. Um, we also, at the same price point, have 118 Lila Lane in Reading, and that was on the market for $789.9. That sold for $770. That was a nine-room, four-bedroom, three-and-a-half-bath home with a master bathroom and a fireplace um, right downtown in the Sanborn Village area. Um, a beautiful million-dollar neighborhood um, for this was a little bit less. It was 3,100 uh, square feet on about a half-an-acre lot, and it had a finished basement, which was an additional 600 
1,100 square feet. Had all the bells and whistles, um, beautiful um, wainscoting and crown moldings, a nice hutch, uh, corner hutch, hardwood floors throughout. Really, um, you know, a beautiful home right at the end of a cul-de-sac. Desirable neighborhood, desirable um, location even within the street. Um, that sold very quickly. Again, that was also for 770000 in Reading. Next, we'll go to Linfield, 9 Stafford Road in Linfield, which is in the Sherwood Forest um, section of town. It was listed at $1,049,000 and sold for $1,058,400, which is very common in this market. Uh, when a home is positioned properly and put on at the right number, you get um, specific buyers that want that house, they w are tending to go over. Can't guarantee it on every listing. But if you, if you position it right, this was a 4,800 square foot home, sits on about three quarters of an acre of land. It just was absolutely beautiful. Had um, the updated kitchen with the granite island. Uh, the island itself sat five people. Had sub-zero refrigerator, wolf gas stove, Bosch dishwashers, tons of cabinets. Just a, a really elegant kitchen. Big, huge family room with a deck across. Outstanding entertainment space inside and out. And again, for $1,058,000 in Linfield, 9 Spofford Road. And in Andover, we're going to be highlighting uh, 9 Trevino in the Andover Country Club. Beautiful, beautiful new construction. It was listed for $2.2 million. It actually sold for $2.272. Um, now, that isn't because of you know a, a bidding war scenario. The additional price on that is for upgrades. So mm -hmm. with new construction, you have a base price, and then you know you start adding all the different fixings that you want and that kind of adds up so that explains why that sold for so high over the list price it's a gorgeous uh, 12 rooms six bedrooms six full bathrooms including a master bathroom two fireplaces one was in the kitchen and one was in the um, family room 6400 square feet included your finished basement it was absolutely um, stunning Gourmet, chef's kitchen, um, all the top end appliances, a butler's pantry, um, you name it. It was just this place had it. Um, it was, you know, a great, uh, you know, great home. It didn't, it wasn't on the market long. It did not sit on the market. It was um, scooped up very quickly as the Andover Country Club neighborhood is one of the most desirable neighborhoods in the Andovers. Um, so again, that sold for 2.272. That was 9 Trevino in Andover. And now we're going to go to... Beantown and beyond. Great. So the Boston market continues to be strong. All the markets around here are strong as well. The Boston market is ridiculously um, quick moving. Um, we had a condo listed at 451 West 4th Street in South Boston. It was a unit that we had for many years as a rental. Um, the investor just kind of kept getting great tenants in year after year and um, decided, hey, let's test the market and see what we can do. We listed it for 459 and we had multiple offers over asking price within a couple of days um, by the first open house. So that sold very quickly, just one, um, you know, one data point for you in terms of you know the kind of market um, that it is that we're having in South Boston and in the greater Boston area. It was a two bedroom home. It had been done about 10 years ago so it wasn't you know fresh freshly done but it had the granite countertops and the stainless steel appliances, um, fresh paint throughout and had a nice deck um, which was exclusive use for the condo. So it was a great uh, great location right in the heart of Southie and uh, moved quickly as everything is doing there and here. It's amazing the prices that you see. My generation, people didn't want to live in the city. Nowadays, these young kids can't get there fast enough. And I'm yeah. in Southie several times a week, mm -hmm. and especially the seaport area. There's so much new construction going up that you know I could be in there on a Monday, and when I'm back on Wednesday, I look and there seems to be a new building mm -hmm. that's gone up, and it's taken you know it takes obviously longer than that, but they're they're just building so quickly, both condos and um, apartment buildings. Um, it's just it's really amazing that you know where that you know this area that used to all be mud lots, mm -hmm. um, big parking lots are all just every square inch of it are is taken up by these beautiful high risers one you know one nicer than the next so it's really uh, amazing to see something to think about new construction in north reading it's a 3,000 square foot colonial nine rooms four bedrooms two and a half baths acre lot um, absolutely beautiful entry foyer it will have um, Nice hardwood floors on the first floor, right up the staircase and into the second floor. 
It will have a nice white kitchen with granite countertops, uh, a luxury dining room, luxury master bedroom with a bath, and uh, three bedrooms upstairs in addition to the master, second floor laundry. Um, has all the bells and whistles that you could be looking for. And it will be listed at 825. Uh, probably will be completed around the first of the year. So um, anybody that's thinking of making a change between now and then, this might be something you want to think about. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us, for tuning in. And we look forward to being back with you in the next few months to talk about the end of the year. Again, if you have any real estate questions, please feel free to reach out to us and email us at price.thishouse at century21.com. Thank you very much for joining us. See you soon.